So you might have been watching my previous video on how to make cutscenes in Roblox. I do recommend you go and watch it. You might have been wondering, well, how do I trigger the cutscene to happen at a certain time? So, for example, when a player, uh, when, when a round starts or when a player escapes you know, from, from a piggy uh, room, or, you know, maybe if they just step on a brick or something like that. How do you make the cutscene happen at a specific time? Because at the minute you play the game, the cutscene will happen uh, pretty much straight away after five seconds. So, you know, how can we make this cutscene only happen when you've done something? And I will show you how that works. So in Roblox, we obviously have uh, local scripts, which run on the client on your computer. And they're the scripts that will be in the starter GUI or the starter pack or the starter player. Okay, and they're local because they run on your computer. Whereas the game and the server scripts, which control, you know, what what happens in the workspace and in the game, and you know, controls everything that all the players see, which aren't things like your camera and GUI because they're specific to certain players. Well, our, most of our code is, is server code, right, running on the server. So how do we trigger these cutscenes and these GUIs or whatever to appear on a player's screen at a specific time? Well, if our code is running in a server script, we can trigger this cutscene. So you can see here I've got this um, function called tween, and I'm just calling it after two seconds to tween the camera. What we can do is we can use a remote event. A remote event very simple or a remote function. I'm going to use a remote event because we don't need to return anything back to the server. So a remote event is something that you can trigger on the server and you can then on the client listen out for when it's fired. And when it does get fired from the server, we can trigger this code to happen locally on the client. So I'll give you an example, right? I'll create a remote event. I'll call it cutscene. You don't have to call it cutscene, but if I fire it by saying game.replicatedStorage.cutscene colon fire client, because I'm firing it for a specific client, I only want it to fire for a specific player. And uh, so we need to tell it which player are we going to fire it for. And so, for example, let's create an event, right? So um, let's create a part, and we'll just call this test, and we can say game.workspace.test.touched kernel connect function so whenever the brick is touched by something if the thing that touched the brick so hit if game so we'll create a variable for the player it's going to be game.players get player from character hit.parent because hit.parent is going to be their character and then if that is a player so this will either be true or false depending on there is a player in the game uh, with this character so if there is a player then we can fire the cutscene remote event for that specific player right and then on the client we can say game dot replicated storage dot cutscene on client event when it's fired from the server to the client we can connect and we can run a function and in this function we're going to have our two lines of code that trigger this cutscene to happen so what will happen is only when this remote event gets fired um, and that will only be when something to when a player touches the brick it will start the cutscene so let me show you so we go in here now and we step on the brick you can see it hasn't happened straight away the cutscene but when I step on the brick you can see it started the cutscene now you did see a bit of a glitch there because it's it ran it twice and that's because I didn't add a debounce to the um, brick I didn't stop it from you know, like there's not a cooldown on it so I could keep jumping on it and it will restart like that but that is how you trigger the cutscene to happen okay and you know you, you might also be thinking well I'm in my game and I want to trigger it for all players in the game how can I do that well if you want to trigger it for all players that are currently in the game you could say fire all clients like this and if you just do a wait five seconds to allow the players to join before it runs when you do fire all clients it will fire the remote event uh, for every player in the game so obviously there's only one in this game but if there were say 10 players they would all see this happening at once whereas if you do fire client and you give a specific player it will only fire the remote event and run the code on the client for them so of course you can also uh, fire it for a specific player outside of a touched event or something like that if you know the player 
So let's say um, you could put uh, game dot players uh, wait for child Alvin underscore blocks, and this is assuming that I'm already in the game. This wouldn't work normally because you can't tell the players that will be in the game, but I'm just saying because obviously we know that I'm going to be joining the game, it will work for me. So if we just wait 15 seconds, um, that should start the cutscene. But you'd usually be using things like for loops to find out, well, to do it to all players or to find a specific a specific player. You can see it started as well. Um, or you'd be able to, you'd have maybe like a, um, for my piggy game, for example, you know who the piggy is and you know who the contestants are. So you could loop through all the contestants and you could fire client for those that are a, a, a contestant. Whereas if you knew who the piggy was, you could put the piggy in, in these brackets here. So uh, that's how you trigger the cutscenes to happen uh, on, on, the, on the client. But what if you wanted to, every time you had a new cutscene, you wanted to specify a new start and end point where well, you could take some information. You could have the, um, you could have the start point and the end point, right? And the time, time length, I'm just going to call it. And then you could, I'm just going to get rid of this second tween. And you could, instead of having the information here, you could just put start point, end point, and time length. And then, when you fire the cutscene from the from the client, let's just do fire all clients. You could put the information in here, right? So game.workspace.test1, game.workspace.test2, and 1. And that would still work. So let me show you again. And play the game. And just wait the 5 seconds, obviously. Oops, I accidentally started it, my bad, because I stepped on the brick. <laughs> Um, oh, in fact, no, it did itself. It did it automatically. It started automatically um, because we haven't got that touch detection anymore. So you can see it works and it only did the one tween. So uh, if you wanted to do more tweens, of course, you could just keep on firing this, um, you know, from test two to test three. And uh, you could go test three back to test one, for example. And that would still do its job. So that is how you do the cutscenes from a server script. Um, you know, trigger triggering them for certain players as well. So I hope that was useful. Don't forget to leave a like on the video if it was. Subscribe, and also this applies to GUIs as well, right? If you wanted to make a GUI appear, you could have a remote event, um, fire client for it, and then pick it up in a local script. And when you do pick it up in the local script, you could make the GUI visible or invisible, or tween it to be on your screen, etc. Anyway, hope it was useful. If it was, drop a like, make sure to smash the subscribe button, share it with a friend so they can get this knowledge as well, and please check out my other videos, including my cutscene video and my live events video, which I went which went live this week. So I hope you enjoy and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.